continuing to work of rings of polynomials, we want to take a look specifically at something called the division algorithm. So say we've got a field, not just a ring, but a field from which we take, we're going to construct one of these rings of polynomials. We're going to take two polynomials inside that ring of polynomials, and specifically we're going to say that g of x is not equal to zero. Then we're going to say that there's unique polynomials q of x and r of x, and before I go through all the details, the whole idea, q is the quotient and r is the remainder. And we can say that f of x is equal to the th g of x is the thing I'm basically dividing by times q of x plus r of x. And that remainder is either equal to zero or it's a polynomial with degree less than the degree of the thing we're dividing by. The proof of this is very constructive. And so rather than actually trying to do it in general, I'm going to go ahead and show how it works for some specific polynomials. So let's go ahead and say we're going to work in Z7X. Z7 is a field. And so what I want to do is I want to say that my F of X all the coefficients in that polynomial have to come from z7. So I'm going to say 5x to the fourth plus 3x cubed plus 2x plus 6. And the g of x, again, f of x is basically the thing I'm dividing into. g of x is the thing I'm dividing by. g of x, I'll make x squared plus 3x plus 4. Really, this whole thing, the whole constructive way we're going to do this, is just long division. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I've got the 5x to the fourth plus 3x cubed. To make sure everything lines up, we're going to put in a 0x squared plus 2x plus 6. And we're going to divide that by x squared plus 3x plus 4. Like I said, this is basically just long division. When I figure out what goes on top, I'm going to be looking at this thing, just the first term, and saying that first term times what gives me the first term here. In this case, that's 5x squared. Then standard long division, whatever I put on top gets multiplied by what's in front, but now I'm going to multiply by the whole thing in front. So I'm going to get 5x to the fourth, 5x squared times 3x. Now if we were working in just the integers or the real numbers, that would be 15x cubed, but we are working in z7. So 15x cubed is really just x cubed. Similarly, 5x squared times 4 would be 20x squared, but mod 7, that's 6x squared. Then, standard long division is we're going to subtract 5x to the 4th minus 5x to the 4th, just cancels out. 3x cubed minus x cubed gives me 2x cubed. Now here, again, standard subtraction would say negative 6x squared, but since we're doing things in z7, that's actually going to be plus x squared. Then we'll bring down the next term, so we get a plus 2x. And we just repeat that. The next thing that goes up top, we're going to have plus 2x, 2x cubed, plus 6x squared, plus 8x is really plus x, and we subtract. 2x cubed minus 2x cubed cancels. x squared minus 6x squared is going to give us 2x squared. 2x minus x is just going to give us x. Bring down the last thing. And then we need a plus 2 up top, because 2 times x squared gives us 2x squared. 
2 times 3x gives us 6x, and 2 times 4 is 8, which is 1, when we do it in mod 7. One last subtraction. x minus 6x gives us 2x. 6 minus 1 gives us 5. So, through this whole thing, this up here is our q of x. So q of x is the 5x squared plus 2x plus 2. And this down here, what we were left with when we couldn't go any further, that's the r of x. And then in general, well, in fact, not in general, specifically what we have, this f of x, the whole thing, is the thing I was dividing by times my quotient plus my remainder. Now, one of the things that made that a little bit straightforward is that I was just dividing by my leading coefficient was just a 1. That made it really easy. Let's do one that's just a little bit harder. Let's say I had 5x cubed plus 2x squared plus 3x plus 6, and I'm going to divide by 2x plus 3. So when I put stuff up top, I need to figure out what do I multiply 2x by to get this. So, the easiest way to think about this is, okay, there's nothing I can multiply 2 by to get 5, certainly not an integer anyway, but 5 is the same thing as 12 in Z7. So, if I put a 6x squared up there, then it works. 6x squared times 2x is 12x cubed, which is really 5x cubed. We get 18x squared, which is 4x squared. We get, and well, actually, that's the whole thing. So then we subtract. That cancels out. Negative 2x squared is really 5x squared. Bring down the 3x. Similar, in fact, pretty much the same thing. So we need a 6x to get the 5x squared plus 18x is really plus 4x. We subtract. That gives me negative x or 6x plus 6. 3, 3 times 2 is 6x plus 2. Subtract and we get 4. So my q of x in this case is the 6x squared plus 6x plus 3 the r of x is just equal to 4.